for being here today and for listening to all these speakers and for Petaluma for doing this inaugural march. That's what we need to be doing. Learning the stories of my ancestors and being a part of communities who hold each other during times of loss, confusion, and grief. I've learned the importance of witnessing, being witnessed, and not suffering alone. For all those moments, we've lost our sanctuary spaces where we've been abused, shut down, sexually harassed, and invalidated. For every woman who has been able to speak truth to power, and for every woman who is burning inside, searching for that moment to speak her truth. Let us not silence our voices any longer. In the words of my sister Om Johari, we don't need allies, we need accomplices. We need all of our children's lives to matter equally. Statistically, we know that black girls are more likely to be referred to law enforcement and to be arrested in school than their white counterparts. Latina students are close to three times more likely to be arrested in elementary school, elementary school, than white female students. And past data has shown that Native American girls were suspended more than three times as often as, as white students. These multiple suspensions are the start of the school to prison pipeline where children are funneled out of public schools and into the juvenile and criminal justice system. We know from data that many of these children have learning disabilities or histories of poverty, abuse, and neglect. Children with disabilities and from racial minority groups are more likely to feel the effects of the school to prison pipeline. And I, like the ACLU, believe that children should be educated and not incarcerated. Jewish and Irish Americans were not white. In fact, right now in 2019, we are seeing the way that Jewish people are being pushed back out of whiteness. Anti-Semitism is on the rise and it's disgusting. The push out of whiteness and the divisions of race are a violent othering that we cannot stand by. What I am saying is that Solidarity with anti-racists is not only the morally right thing to do, it is the only way we can save our rights as women. We can I am always uncomfortable when I walk the streets of Petaluma. People clutching their purses when I walk by. I'm sorry, but I cannot call you an ally because I do not trust you. Trust needs to be earned. And you've shown me that I cannot. You go to the Women's March every year and feel empowered to do something that empowerment starts to fade because the problem doesn't concern you but you go to the women's march every year and call yourself a feminist no more compromise no more taking things slow let's fight I'm 18 years old and should not have to fight for my rights as a human being I am 18 years old and telling a group of adults to fight and stand up and do something. Fight for me as I would for you. We are only rising and you can rise with us or just sit back and watch. I'd like to invite all the youth that are in the audience to come to the front. Here. If you are a teenager, come to the front. We want you in the front. I want to see all your beautiful faces. Safeway 
or going shopping. She loved doing her makeup and her hair. It wasn't unusual to see her sporting bleach blonde or purple in her curls. She attended school dances, including prom, and dressed up in pink, the senior class color for spirit days. Among the people that knew her, she was loved, appreciated, and seen as the fun friend. She was someone that could brighten up a room just by walking into it. But Jordan was not like most teenagers. She was transgender. For most of her life, she had lived in the closet, forced through the systematic oppression of a cis-normative society to pretend to be someone she was not. And on June 1st, 2018, the night of Casa graduation ceremony, Jordan committed suicide. Her story is just one of many that have left a deep and painful impact on the LGBTQ community. A community that regularly experiences the crippling effects of mental illness and suicidal thoughts or actions. Looking back on the end of Jordan's life raises questions of how and why our community is constantly facing these adversities. To the fact that our work is far from over. This march is the first in many steps towards creating a safe, equitable, and inclusive Petaluma. I have a duty to my community, both local and global, to take action against the injustice that I suffer and the injustice that I witness others suffering on a daily basis. I am an activist to honor my family, to protect my friends, and to safeguard my future. This is the responsibility that I hold to myself, but I have come to recognize that I have responsibility to those less fortunate than me that is just as important. I have a duty as a white, cisgender, heterosexual member of society to not only have the difficult conversations about race, gender, and prejudice with the world around me, but to look within myself and face my own privilege. It is my responsibility to recognize that I benefit directly from the suffering and subjugation of nearly every community that does not perfectly conform to the expectations of a toxically masculine, violently white society.